Dunn of it, the mindset disruption strategist. Welcome to Kingdom Odyssey, where we help families and business owners redefine success by asking a simple question. How do you know that what you're building won't damage your marriage, your children, or your grandchildren? Right? Because what we want to help people do is build generational prosperity and kingdom impact. So today's question centers around this. How can I pay less income taxes? Or, as I'm going to rename it, don't let fear drive the bus. So whenever I see a question like this, the first thing that really comes to mind is we have to start by disrupting our current way of thinking. To say, Eric, how do I pay less income taxes? Well, let's stop by interrupting the first place that you're going to go to to, to think about this, because I'm going to show you a different path, a different way of thinking about it. But what I find is that the entire financial service industry is caught in this vicious cycle of what I like to call unconscious manipulation. It keeps you trapped in their systems. And those systems actually have you building sandcastles instead of kingdom. They may be really, really pretty sandcastles, but they're sandcastles. So let me tell you a little bit of a story that kind of captures this in a bigger way. So in 2020, um, my teams and I were working with a family and we had completed a full kingdom blueprint for them. Um, we knew exactly how much money they were going to need. They they had built a plan that said, hey, we've got an, we, we know we're going to be OK to take care of ourselves. We know we're going to be OK to take care of our kids. And they were kind of looking at, OK, this particular year they had make some, made some excess income. And it was like, how? This year, can we pay less in income taxes? So one of the keys to knowing how much income tax you're going to pay is knowing how much income you need. This is why the plan was so important. Um, you can't do things with money that you might need to use to live on. That money is going to be subject to income taxes. For the families that we serve, many times it's not uncommon that they have more income than they actually need. So when you look at money, excess money that comes in, you actually only have three things that you can do with it. So you can spend it, you can save it, or you can give it away. And the cool thing about giving it away is that the IRS partners with you to give you a really good tax deduction for giving it away. And not only that, it's an opportunity to make more kingdom impact, to get involved in things that God is doing. And so this family was excited about that. They had looked at some opportunities that they had seen. And again, as we were going through the Kingdom Blueprint and looking at it, it's like, hey, as we look at where things stand right now, with the money that you have, you don't need to spend it. You don't need to save it. We think you ought to give it away. But part of the strategy of reducing their income taxes was going to have them giving away some appreciated assets that were in their investment account. And this was also going to reduce some capital gains taxes, but that's a story for, for another time. The investment advisor started planting seeds of doubt. Hey, are you, are you really sure you're going to have enough? You know, we, we've been going through coronavirus, a lot of things going on. I, I, I just don't know. You guys really ought to, I don't, I don't know that you ought to give that much money away. Like the, the advisor started planting seeds of doubt into the client. And one of the things that I know is fear is a really strong motivator. But the other thing that I know, go back to this entire idea of unconscious manipulation, what really frustrated me was the investment advisor knew and realized, guess what? If they give this money away, I'm going to have less money to manage. Now, they didn't come out and say it. I don't even know if they consciously thought it, but it was true. They were taking money out of their investment account to give away. And what they didn't realize was that by telling the clients, hey, you shouldn't give this away, it actually was going to cost them more in income taxes and other taxes in the future. See, the system of unconscious manipulation and the way that it's set up led the family not only into doubt, but actually into the future of saying, hey, what am I going to do with, again, it ends up being excess that they're going to end up having to pay taxes on. The fear planted enough seed of doubt inside of this family that they only ended up giving away about half of what we knew that they could give away inside of their plan, half of the income tax deduction half of the capital gains tax deduction opportunity. I mean, it was, it was a lot of things that weren't done. Why does this matter? Well, as I said, the family ended up paying more income taxes, right? That That's the first thing. This isn't uncommon because what we find is that a kingdom mindset has to operate out of truth, not fear. But the sad part was the family 
heard the fear and then the fear started planting doubt. Why do I say this isn't new? Well, at the very beginning of time, when Satan tempted Eve and Adam, his comment was, did God really say? It was that simple. That one little seed of doubt led to the sin that we deal with in the world. Why would we expect today to be any different? But here's what I know. God has put us in a position that when we can operate out of truth instead of fear, we actually have greater opportunity. In 2 Timothy 1.7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Power, love, and a sound mind are the opposite of fear. And I think we really kind of have to ask ourselves, where's this showing up for us? I mean, maybe we end up paying more income tax because we're operating out of fear. But the other side is maybe we know we've been needing to get a health screen done and we're afraid we're going to have to go on an exercise program or the doctor's going to tell us to lose some weight and we're fearful of what that outcome might be. So we don't do it. Maybe there's a conversation we need to have with one of our children and we're holding back from having it out of fear and not getting the best inside of our relationship. Do you see how fear not only costs us in taxes, but can cost us in our health, our family? It can cost you in business. It can cost you in your relationship with God. Fear is a terrible partner. And I know it sounds crazy. You're like, Eric, you just told me that the way to pay less income tax is to live less in fear and more in truth. Yeah, that's part of it is being in a place of having confidence and knowing that you're on a kingdom path aligned with God. Because then you can take advantage of the strategies and things that are out there that align and make more kingdom impact. So there, here's the real question, right? Where in your life could you let go of fear and more becomes possible than you can see right now? And how could letting go of that fear be a blessing to your marriage and to your children? The kingdom mindset does a few things. It provides certainty and clarity in all areas of life. And when you have that kind of certainty, you can create generational prosperity and make an impact for eternity. God bless you. Have a great day.